In the Green Star's Glow is a science fantasy novel by American writer Lynn Carter, the final book in his Green Star series. It was published in 1976. Topic. Plot summary Janchan and Aryala are married in Comer, where they also honeymoon. Karn, feeling that he needs to do something almost anything, to help rescue Neve, takes some of the leftover food, drink items from the wedding feast and stashes them in the storage compartment of the sky sled which he then energizes and heads towards the trees. As it is night, he quickly tethers it to a branch and falls asleep. He is awakened the next morning by a spear point touching his chest. Held by a teenaged girl, Varda. Some of Varda's companions, including one named Iona, at 15 slightly older than Varda, urge her to kill him. Due to Iona being a rival for leadership, Varda decides to spare but enslave Karn. On the tubular craft, Neve scratches Delgan and advances on him with her knife but Delgan manages to persuade her to sheathe it through some oily words. Then, he forces her to back against the rear bulkhead by pointing the Zukar at her with a threat to use it, and advances to throw her off. Only to be prevented as Zorak shoots him in the hand with an arrow. Due to the pain, he cannot use an oily tone, and his further attempts to persuade Neve that he is friendly fall flat. When Zorak comes forward to stop the aircraft, Delgan tells him to back off or die, and is not persuaded of danger when Zorak points out the approaching tree bowls. A branch then strikes inside the cockpit and pulls Delgan out. So he was the falling occupant seen by Zarka and Janchan. After stopping the aircraft, Zorak and Neve find themselves facing a YTHID. Zorak tries to kill it by shooting it in the eye, unsuccessfully, as the lizard shuts its nictitating membrane, while Neve tries to poke her knife in from its back, which allows Zorak to shoot it in the throat. Neve then almost faints from exhaustion and fear. Zorak, putting aside his weapons, prevents this but slips off the branch after stepping in the dead Ithid's blood. Neve, taking the weapons, explores the branch until she comes upon a tower of strange design, construction. Karn would have told her that it was built by one of Zarka's race, where she walks into a lab with a detached head. The head's eyes open and it cries, Wah wah wah. Whereupon an odd looking dwarf, Corin, comes in and takes her as prisoner. The head is the result of one of his experiments, which failed, he believes, due to the brain being disconnected from oxygen for too long. He puts her under the guard of another of his experiments, number nine, a giant with four arms and two heads, one male, one female, but almost no intellect, according to Corin. Neve quickly figures that Corin's experiments are just like those Zarka told her the Kaluta had conducted, a quest for immortality. Zorak, meanwhile, lands on a flower which tries to swallow him. As he struggles, a voice tells him to relax and wait for night. He finds the source of the voice to be a cron, Zikshaka. The logic of Zikshaka is that when the petals close, the two of them can then destroy them Zikshaka with his mandibles and claws, Zorak by pulling them at base, which Zorak accepts, allowing the two to escape at night. As Zorak attempts to part later from Zikshaka, the latter's horde captures and enslaves him, setting him to manufacture weapons swords, spears, bows, specifically modified for Kron usage. He finds out from Zargo, the chief smith captive, that this is due to the plans of the horde's ruler, R.K. Kith, to invade and destroy one of the treetop cities, Phaelan. A plan put into Urketh's mind by a treacherous, odd human captive. 
The treacherous captive once accompanies R.K. Kith on a weapons manufacturing inspection tour and is recognized by Zorak as Delgan to no surprise. Eventually, when the Horde nears Phalan, they find an odd structure and a group of Kron led by Zikshaka with Zorak along as a slave is sent to investigate. Koran eventually boasts to Neve that he has perfected the technique by which his brain will survive and trained number 9 to do the surgery as it can be performed much faster due to the multiple arms he then chains neve and forces her to watch the surgery grinning when his head is finally disconnected from his torso only to react in horror as number 9 then stabs him in the brain and to death number 9 then destroys the lab putting Wawa the head which had made that sound, so named by Corin, out of misery. The Kron party has meantime, entered the tower, except for Zikshaka and the two guarding Zorak. They are promptly slain by number 9, but not before they maul the giant severely with their jaws and claws. Outside, Zarka has arrived, when one of the Kron guards tries to stab him with modified spear, Zarka grabs the weapon and flings it through the insect's body, allowing Zorak to break the neck of the other. Zarka then tells him that they must hurry as he has sensed Neve's mind radiations from a Kalud built tower nearby. When they enter the tower, they find the lab destroyed and no Neve though they do see the broken chains that held her, and know she is still alive. Zorak recovers his bow and quiver and the two then leave to search further. Zikshaka has freed Neve from the chains with his mandibles and claws, and tells her to tell Zorak that at least one Kron Zikshaka now understands the meaning of friendship and also warns her that the Kron are advancing on Phalan. Neve then finds the tubular craft and pilots it away. Meanwhile, the Amazons discover Karn's journey stash and hit it with wild abandon. Getting drunk in the process. Varda then forces Karn to lie in her bed. And is warned by him that another is watching. Iona, the Watcher, then goes to get the other girls to gang up on and kill Karn and Varda. Karn takes Varda in the sky sled and pilots it away. Varda then asks Karn to kiss him. The two are then startled by a scream, as Neve has seen them, leaving Karn dejected. Eventually, the Kron arrive in the neighborhood of Phalan and are detected by scouts. Fayalan's warriors, on their zyphs attack the Kron host, but are not able to blunt the attack much, due to the sheer numbers of Kron pushing forward. Delgan smiles on seeing this, as his plan has been to destroy Phalan, hoping the grief of its loss will then kill Karn, Neve and others. Just then, two aircraft with three aboard come into view and land in Phalan. Delgan recognizes the pilots as Karn and Neve, but does not know the third occupant, Varda. Karn and Neve quickly take some of Fayalan's archers and fly out over the Kron host to do much more damage than the frontal attack. At that point, Zarka and Zorak, who Delgan also recognizes, come in. The Kalud determines the Kron officers and directs Zorak to slay them. The loss of officers throws the forwardmost Kron into a state of retreat, and the ones following to continue pressing forward on last orders, creating a jam which the Phaolanes exploit. This panics R.K. Kith, who flees. Delgan shouts that he can turn the tide of battle, but R.K. Kith in his panic fails to recognize him. Mauling the blue barbarian warlord with his claws and throwing him aside. Delgan then slays R.K. Kith with the Zukar, and has a last laugh before expiring. Zikshaka now becomes the new ruler of the Kron and negotiates a withdrawal from Phalan. 
He promises his friend Zorak who has served as emissary that the Kron will never again attack the treetop cities. Varda then explains what happened to Neve, who promptly announces to the victorious Phaeolanes that she and Karn are to be married. Sometime after the marriage, the author puts Prince Karn's body in a state of temporary suspended animation and makes a temporary return to his earthly body to write down the accounts, and instructions for their release. Before he returns permanently leaving the crippled, earthly body to die naturally to Phaelan, he writes, I am caught in the green star spell, and never wish to be free of it. Topic. External links In the Green Stars Glow title listing at the Internet Speculative Fiction Database